Today, we are going to learn how to crochet a fancy drawstring bag. Let's get started. This, it's actually two yarns spun together, not even really spun together. They're just wound into a ball at the same time. But you've got one that stays the same color and one that changes color. So it's a really fun way to kind of do something different with a variegated yarn. So that's what we'll be starting out with. I'm also going to be using some of this faux suede cord. You can crochet yourself a drawstring if you want, but for the sake of this tutorial, it'll just be faster for me to use this. And then I've got some beads in here, just four beads, a good big needle for weaving in my ends, and a rusty can of Altoids. They don't make these ginger ones anymore, but they were really, really good when they did. These Susan Bates hooks are the very best hooks there are, in my opinion. I really like the way they're shaped at the end. They're a little bit easier to work with. They don't slip out of your yarn as easy. We're gonna make probably a small size dice bag today. You determine your size on these by how many chains you start off with. So we're gonna say, let's do 10. See how that looks. Two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is as wide as our bag is going to be. I think I want to add a few more stitches. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think that looks good. So now that we have our 14 chains, we're going to be going into this stitch right here. Just doing a single crochet. Slip your hook in there. Do that again slow so you can see. Make sure you go through both strands of yarn there because again we're using two instead of one. Pull that through. It's just a single crochet stitch. So you yarn over and pull through there. And now we're going to go all the way down this strand till we get to the end. One of the things that's tricky when working with two strands of yarn, you really want to make sure you go through both of those. It gets easier as you go along. It's always that first couple of rows that you have to figure out. Don't worry about it curling up like that right now. That's just fine. Getting through that first little stitch can be a little bit tricky. All right. So I can pull this and close that up nice and tight, and that is half of our first row. What we're going to want to do now, we want to do an extra single crochet right at the end here. So I'm going to go into that same stitch again that I just struggled to get into. Go right on in there. Kind of working a little increase right, right at that end. What we're going to do now is go all the way back across, ending right there. Making sure I'm not... I know that's a little bit hard to see. You see where I've done two in here? That's the stitch we want to go into. So we're going to go in, work a single crochet, and then just make my way across that row. Again, don't worry about it curling up. This first row is going to be persnickety. I'm at the end here. 
I think I'm going to do another increase in here and maybe a couple more at this end just so that the bottom of my bag is a little bit wider, be able to fit more into it. So we're going to go, this is where we started. We want to do one more into there, keep it the same on either end. And now we want to go into this stitch. We're not slip stitching and starting a new row or anything fancy like that. We're just going right into this next stitch, the single crochet. So we're in there. I'm going to do another one in there. Little increase. And now we're just going to go straight across again. So we got to the other end here. We're going to do another increase right here. We did an increase down on this end. We did another one right here. It's just where you do two single crochet stitches into one space. And now we're gonna do this one on the end here. But now we've gotta go across this side. And since we did an increase here and an increase here, we also wanna do one here and here. Just keep it symmetrical. So right there, we're going to do one and then another one in that spot. And now we're just going to single crochet across. I never actually learned to read patterns. I can read a crochet chart just fine. And I can kind of read a crochet pattern, but it's just easier for me to sit and play with it and kind of make things up as I go along. I have a harder time reading patterns than I do just doing stuff freestyle. So now we're on this side, we're going to do that increase. And then we're just going to start going around. I think that's enough increasing for right now. When I get to this point, I might say, okay, here's the bottom of my bag. I'm going to do one row around here. This is totally optional. Or I'm only going into the back part of this stitch. And I'll show you what that does in a minute. It kind of makes a nice little seam for us. But instead of going under both of those, where you'd normally go under both of those little V's right there, like that. We are going to go right through the middle of that stitch. Really just grabbing the back part of it. We're still doing a single crochet. See if I can get up close here to show you guys that. See, instead of going under both of these, which isn't what we'd normally do, we are just going through that back one. There's a name for this, and I'll be darned if I know what it is. Frankly, I don't care. I just do what I want. And I encourage you to do the same. All right, so you can start to see what that's doing there. It's a little bit different. We're gonna have a nice little edge there. Kind of defines the bottom of your bag from the rest of it. Just gives it a little bit more structure. And you only have to do this once. You could keep doing it around and around and you'd kind of have a ribbed texture. All right, so we just got to the end here. So we've gone all the way around here. And now we wanna go back to doing a regular crochet stitch. And this will be a little bit tricky, transitioning back to a normal single crochet But once you get that first one in there, it'll kind of pull the rest of them up for you and even that back out. And that is really all you're going to be doing for the rest of this project. 
is single crochet into each next space. Again, if you don't have any experience with this, if you're brand new to crochet, I encourage you to check out my last video. I use a nice big chunky yarn. It's really easy to see what's going on. The fact that you're even learning to crochet is freaking incredible. It's one of those things that takes a lot of focus and patience in the beginning, but once it clicks, man, you don't even have to think about it. And that's why people find it relaxing. It's hard to believe that this could be a relaxing hobby when you're first learning to do it, because believe me, it was frustrating for me to learn. So you can see what that's starting to do. We've got a nice little edge right there. I'll show you from above. All you're doing is going around in a spiral. I know that if you're just starting, again, it's not an easy thing to learn. You gotta be patient with yourself. I think I'm gonna pack this up. I'm gonna finish this project at home for you guys. I'm gonna show you how I do the drawstring. Before I go, I just wanna show you something fun I have in my bag. This is a historic pattern from Butterick. I don't know how historically accurate it is. I don't care. Just wanted to show you how neat this is, that this is basically what we're making out of crochet. What? I dropped my tripod. Anyway, I'm gonna put a pin in this. I'm gonna run home and make dinner, and then we are going to finish up this project. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm just about done here. Got this as long as I want it to be. You can just kind of eyeball it and say, you know, if you're putting your drawstring right along here, that's where it'll be cinched. And that looks about good to me. You can make it a little bit longer if you want it to be. You wanna make sure that you finish it off on the same side you started. So if I pull my tail out, this was where I first started my chain. So I just wanna make sure I'm ending on that same side. Doesn't really matter. You can fudge it if you run out of yarn, but at this point, especially since you've just been going around in a spiral working in the round, it won't really show if you end on either side. This is where I want to go into my last stitch. And instead of crocheting into that one, I'm just going to do a slip stitch. Pull that nice and tight. By the way, these are from my friend Jacqueline. They were a Christmas gift and they're just so freaking cute. So once you've cut your yarn, you're just going to pull that all the way through. And I'm going to show you how to weave that in so that you don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and flip this inside out. There you go. You can see where I kind of hid some of my mistakes on the inside where my yarn had an imperfection in it. Not a big deal. So now, all right, pulling that through. You want to do everything you can to kind of make sure that you pull this in a way that you have a nice straight line across there. What I generally do, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna just start going in through there. And that looks pretty good. Especially when you're working with two strands of yarn like this, I think it's a little bit easier to kind of hide that top seam. There might be a better way to do it. This is just how I do things. So I'm just kind of taking my needle in and out just in the back part of these stitches. I'm not going, I'm not going all the way through. I don't want to, you know, start putting loops through the front of my work. I'm just going in through the back couple of loops there and every now and then you can go around there twice make sure your yarn doesn't get tangled and before I pull that loop all the way through come on dude before I pull that all the way through I'm just gonna stick my needle back through there again and pull it and that makes a little knot you don't have to do that every time but 
just to really kind of secure your yarn and keep it from unraveling itself. So now, instead of just cutting this off here, I'm actually gonna go all the way down here to right here. And the trick to doing this is making sure that you don't pull it too hard and you don't wanna cinch up this side of your work. You can keep it fairly loose. And these tapestry needles are great for weaving in your work. You've got a really nice big eye here to get your yarn through. And it's kind of blunt here, so you're not gonna be actually splitting the yarn where it's twisted together. You're just going through down the side here. One stitch at a time. You can go through a couple at a time if you feel like doing it. And this is the part of crochet that I hate doing the most. So actually, since this is different colors on here, you can see exactly where I'm carrying this strand of yarn down. So we've got our tail running all the way down to here. And at this point, you could take both of these and weave them in and cut them. But I just showed you how to weave in ends. And I need to move on here, so I'm just going to tie this in a knot a couple of times. Oh, see? Pulled that too tight. Be careful you don't do that. Just kind of tug on it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Going to tie this in another knot. We're never going to see the inside of this bag, so I'm just going to go ahead, snip that. So when we turn this right side out, this is what we end up with. Our knot is right there. You can barely see where that started. Now it's time to put the drawstring in here. Normally I would block it before I put my drawstring in, but I am filming in my car and I cannot plug in my iron. So I've made these drawstring bags with a lot of different materials. And the thing I want to let you guys know about faux suede cord is that it's actually pretty easy to break if you pull it too hard. And it will eventually, you know, deteriorate over time. It also tends to crimp itself like this. So I'm not actually a big fan of this particular material, but it is easy to string things through with. So if you think you're gonna be, you know, selling these or using it a whole lot, if it's just for a cosplay, it probably won't matter too much. But you can typically just stick that right through. And kind of a good rule of thumb is wrap that around there and make sure that even when it's opened up, you've still got about three or four inches on either side. What I want to do, kind of find your center here, maybe two stitches in between. Bring your needle right on up through there. And then, through there. And then we're just going to go every couple of stitches pulling your cord through. Make sure you come out in the front center here and do the same thing going in the opposite direction. And hopefully you end up just about center front there. Now, since we have kind of a thicker material here, it's not quite wanting to close itself up. What I like to do, following that pattern I showed you earlier, we're gonna do a second set of drawstrings that are gonna come out on the other side here. Just going right 
right over those in the opposite direction, exactly where we went through before. You want to make sure that when you're going through here, you're not putting your needle through an actual stitch like that. You want to make sure you're kind of going through the spaces in between the stitch. Come on, dude. We're just kind of retracing our steps in the opposite direction. Pulling that out center front. I actually prefer to crochet just a chain stitch. You can do it out of a brown or a black or a gray or any color you want really. But that's actually going to make a stronger drawstring that'll hold up better over time. You can tie it and untie it and do everything you would have done. You don't even have to weave in the ends of it. You can just tie it off and kind of unravel the yarn and you have a tassel on that end. I usually cap it off with a bead anyway. If you use something really silky, it might pull itself open, but a crochet cord or leather cord has pretty good grip so it'll hold it shut. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you're carrying your bag around and all your dice fall out in your purse, it is really, really annoying. I've got my beads now. I think what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can get both pieces through there. I can. All right, and obviously if you do it, you don't like it, you can just take these out and redo them. It's really easy to go back and readjust what you've done. And you'd actually be surprised. I mean, this is a pretty small bag, all things considered. You can fit at least a couple sets of dice in here. You really don't have to block it at all if you don't want to. Over time, it'll loosen out a bit, but your dice certainly won't fall out. You pull that shut. You know, everything's good and secure in there. This is how I like to make dice bags. I've made a lot of these. I've done a lot of trial and error, and this is just kind of my preferred method. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, this has been super fun. I hope this tutorial is helpful to somebody. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover as far as crochet goes, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.